Hey guys, JB here, the Wolf of Wall Street. I am in the Wolf's Den. Got an awesome guest today, one of my favorites of all time. I call this guy the marketer's marketer, meaning he's the guy that you know your average Facebook marketer or Google marketer will go to to get the real deal, what's happening next. It's a guy who's been around the block about 10,000 times and is truly a brilliant man. He's respected by all, he's hired by the biggest companies in the world, and he also will take the time to speak to any young entrepreneur because he just loves to spread the wealth and loves to spread information around. So other people can make money too. I'm talking about none other than Neil Patel. Neil Patel truly is a legend in the marketing game, both offline and online, but he really made his name in online marketing and how you really use a combination of you know, all of your paid traffic, your social, combined with old-fashioned SEO, he mixes them together in a, a cohesive package that is literally really, really powerful and explosive. So I don't want to belabor this anymore. I want to get right to it. We're going to take a quick break here to hear from our sponsor, and then we're going to go right to Neil Patel and I unpacking his specialty, which is marketing. All right, here's the deal. So America gets back to work. You want and need every possible advantage out there to succeed in the new economy. Smart companies run on NetSuite by Oracle, the world's number one cloud-based business system. So receive your free guide right now at netsuite.com slash wolf. That is netsuite.com slash wolf. All right, business owners, stop wasting money on expensive legal fees. Hire your own business attorney for a monthly rate that's less than what most lawyers would charge you per hour. Hire Biz Counsel. My listeners get their setup fee waived, a $300 value just by going to my special link, bizcouncil.com slash wolf. All right, Neil Patel. So Neil, you are the marketer's marketer. You're truly an expert in your field. I have one important question to ask you, and I'm sure every entrepreneur, every online and offline marketer that's listening to this or just business owner, what do we do to maximize Q4 sales? How do we take advantage of what's about to happen? I know for my own business, the next, from uh, it's like maybe the week before, a few days before Thanksgiving, straight through the end of the year, and a few days after, I just, just did massive amounts of business, and I kicked myself in the ass afterwards, said, God, I should have advertised more, prepared more. What is the best way for someone in you know my position, anyone listening, to set themselves up now for a massive end of year bonanza? So there's a few things that are happening right now. One, ad costs are gonna go through the roof in Q4. Reason being is not just because of COVID, because of e-commerce, right? Everything's moving online. So Black Friday is gonna be bigger. Cyber Monday is gonna be bigger. Uh, Amazon Prime Day, right? Bigger than the year before. But on top of that, this is election year. So the amount of money that you're seeing Trump and Biden spend on ads is also causing the cost to go up. Now, eventually, Facebook and some of the platforms have came out and said that they're not going to allow future political ads. But for this year, you're pretty much screwed. The costs are going to go up. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do ads. But what you should do is add in an upsell and add in a downsell on your checkout. It's literally the easiest things to do. If you're going to do a third thing, add a checkout bump because that will increase your average order value. And then from there, spend more money on ads. The second thing I would do is I would go and go find all the complimentary people in your space. So you do sales related stuff, right? There's probably other people who teach sales, but not necessarily the same sales stuff that you teach. Would you? And of course, not as good. There you go. But, but, but different angle of sales, right? There's many different things you can fine tune in sales, such as how to fine tune your processes or software, or sales skills, and the list can go on and on. You can partner with some of those people and have them promote you and then you promote them. We're seeing that as huge wins. Like think of it this way. If you can't add an upsell or a downsell or a checker because you don't have one, go find someone else in your space that you respect, have them uh, take their product and do an upsell with them or a downsell with them, right? And vice versa. Makes sense. Okay, I like that. This guy definitely got some potential there. Okay, keep going. Then the other thing I would do is I would just start creating mass quantities of content. Okay, so do keyword research. And here's what I mean by this. 
everyone always ends up spending money on ads. It's why Google and Facebook are so huge. That's a given. But Microsoft ended up releasing a report where that broke down what marketing skill sets people should focus their time and energy on if they want to uh, be effective marketers in the future. The number one tactic was SEO. One of the least invested aspects in marketing is SEO. So you can do keyword research. There's tons of free tools out there. Pick any one you want and type in keywords related to your space. When you type in keywords related to your space, you'll see a laundry list of keywords that are also relevant that you can just go and start creating content around. And if you just write tons and tons of blog content, that's really good about those topics. Okay. Not mediocre, but just really, really good. You're not going to get that much traffic for end of Q4. You're not going to get that much traffic even middle of next year. But by the end of next year, you're going to start seeing that content generate a lot of traffic. From there, drive those people into a webinar. And then from a webinar, pitch whatever products, services you're offering to offer. Even you can do it for e-commerce. Or you can just link within your blog content to the product you're selling you, let's say if it's e-commerce. So let, let's slow down for a second here, because that's a, an interesting uh, perspective. I think that most people nowadays overlook this whole idea of organic traffic, SEO, right? So I, I think for me, I've been fortunate because I have a brand. So I get a lot of organic traffic where people will either maybe, uh, you know, see something about me or read or watch the movie and then come. But what about the person that doesn't have that? How do you, the, the, the real methodology for, for getting yourself, and you're talking about getting ranked on the first page of Google. Is that really what you, what you're talking about here? Yep. Okay, right. So, so what is it really about the fact that most people spend their days making video content, but video content isn't what gets you ranked high because it's not block. They can't, they, they can't crawl it. So you're saying turn it into a blog where people, the, the computers can actually read it. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. Now they are getting better at crawling video content, but it doesn't rank that well. Like anytime you do a Google search, almost all the results are text based. And if you don't have a brand, see, when I started off, I didn't have a brand. And my brand's nowhere near the size of yours. I get right now 10 million visits to my website each month without ads. And then what happened was all those visitors through SEO ended up helping to build my brand. So now on any given month, I get around 180,000 visits just from Google of people typing in my name, Neil Patel, and clicking on over to my website. But it first started off where I was getting zero people looking for my name. I was creating all this content. And when you're creating all this content, eventually you start getting traffic and then people start subscribing and it eventually builds your brand. How long is the lag time? This is a really important question because you, so, so you brought up the idea, okay, so if you do this and you start writing blogs, you're not going to impact it tomorrow. You're not going to make money off. Christmas time, and you probably won't even see any results during the beginning and middle of next year. But by the time it comes around to next Christmas, you're going to be golden. So is the problem that you think most people have with SEO is that they start doing it, they don't see the near term payoff. So they say, ah, it's not working and they quit versus realizing that it's more of a long term investment in your brand in terms of, you know, building up that name recognition and also just getting yourself ranked up. Is it a matter of time just wearing down the algorithm? Is that what it's about? It is just time. And that's where most businesses make a mistake. They know it's a long term thing, but they'll do it for six months, look at how much money they spent, and then they just quit. But if they just want for that extra six months, at the end of a year, you start seeing some really or decent results. Usually you can see good results. But at the end of two, three years, that's when it really kicks in. And it's just a snowball effect and it can ex exponentially grow, especially when you're starting off. But businesses usually aren't willing to put in the time and energy into it and the investment. But when you look at it, the grand scheme of things is so much cheaper than ads, much more sustainable, uh, much more profitable in the long run. So. Oh, I would think so, for sure, right? So, so what's the... Um... So what's the type of things do you want to be? So you mentioned writing, look, looking up the keywords and writing about the keywords. So where would you put those articles? Those, do you put those on your website and link in a blog, in a blog section? Where would you publish those? Would you try to get linked to other, other uh, magazines and other, uh, online, uh, you know, periodicals? How do you get your stuff out there? Does, or it doesn't matter as long as it's just out there and searchable that they'll eventually start picking it up. So I'll give you four steps. 
Okay, first is I have a free tool called Uber Suggest. You can go find the keywords and then from there you can end up creating content. Publish it on yourdomain.com slash blog slash whatever it is. So that way all your blog content's in the a blog folder. All right, that's the first step. The second step is taking those articles and then pushing them out on the social web, sharing them on Facebook, Twitter, you know, Pinterest, uh, Instagram, you can't do much you can tell people to swipe up. Uh, Instagram is not great for promoting content. LinkedIn's another place. So that'll help starting to get the traffic rolling in. The third thing I want you to do is, and you mentioned this is links. See the way internet works or Google works is it's like a voting system. In the presidential election, the candidate who's most likely going to win is the one with the most votes. I know it's on an electoral basis in the United States, but in general, you know, generally speaking, the person with the most votes usually wins. Google works the same way. The person with the most votes ranks at the top. But a vote on Google isn't someone saying, hey, I vote for this site. It's me saying, hey, I link to this website and a link being a vote because you can't talk to the search engine, but they can understand what you're saying by links. So if your website has more links than someone else and they're more relevant, the better off you're going to be. Just like President Barack Obama telling you to vote for a candidate, whether it's Trump or Biden, is going to have more weight than me, Neil Patel, saying vote for a candidate because he's a politician. On the flip side, if I talk about marketing or entrepreneurship, still probably don't have as much weight as President Obama, but I have quite a bit of weight in that category because that's what I'm known as an expert. Just like with you in business and sales, right? So when you're writing the content, and this is the third step, when you're writing the content, you usually link out to other websites to sort your, uh, cite your sources, break down some stats, some data, case studies, whatever it may be. When you naturally link to people, email them. Let them know that you link to them. Ask them to share your content, and if they like it, even link back. Some of them will, some of them won't. And don't worry if they link back or not, but doing that one little thing will get you more social love and it'll also get you ranked higher on the internet because some of those people will start linking back to you. Interesting. Yeah, keep going. And then the fourth one is you need to fix your code. So if your code, like you mentioned, it's easier for them to crawl text-based content over videos. If your code isn't friendly for Google, you're not going to do well. So we'll go back to Uber Suggest. It's free. There's a site audit report in there in the left hand navigation. And just your URL, put it in, and it'll break down all the errors that are found and what you need to fix to rank higher on Google. And it breaks them down step by step on how to fix them for free. What's it called? Ooh, ooh, how do you spell that? U B E R. Oh, Uber Suggests. Uh huh. S U G G E S T. Sadly, the name isn't the best, but when I bought the company, that was the name, and it's too much work to change it. Got it. Okay. So. So essentially making your website more friendly for Google's uh, uh, engine to crawl and, and ascertain what's relevant and what's not. Exactly. Okay. And if you do those four things, you're saying it's not, when would you start to first notice a change? How long out? Six months, a year, three, when would you first start to get glimmers of it? Within three months, you'll start noticing something. Six months, it starts kicking in a little. Within a year, you really start seeing the results. Within three years, you're off into the races. Got it. And are there ways that an entrepreneur with somewhat of a bankroll, not a big one, but let's say someone's willing to invest some amount of capital that can hasten that process through capital investment? Is there ways to not, I wouldn't say just, you know, cheat the system, but to expedite things, to tip it in your favor. Obviously, I guess you could write more articles, create more blogs, but are there other things that you can do that are legitimate, not like, you know, not cheating the system, but sort of really gaming it in a positive way to get yourself there quicker? It, it comes down to what you said. You would have to either write more content, build more links, get more social shares, but even then it still takes the same time frame. You'll get more traffic within that time frame, but the first year, you won't get the results you're looking for. And that's what makes SEO beautiful. See, not everyone has money, right? And I got into SEO because I can compete with the big guys when it comes to ads. Sure. What's what's beautiful about it is when you don't have a ton of money, yeah, sure, if you spend more, you'll get results a little bit quicker in the long run. Of course, you'll get way more traffic if you spend more money. But this is what allows a little guy to compete with the big guys. So is it basically 
the great equalizer SEO? I genuinely believe it is that along with social media. Cause if you look at a lot of the people who are popular on social media, yeah, you got your celebrities, but it's not a lot of big companies and you have a lot of micro influencers who are making a killing and just, you know, having a big following. Like I was asking one of my teammates earlier today, his name was Fabian and Fabian's just like, you know, I was talking to him and we were talking about social and he's just like, give me a quote for social. So I gave him one or he's like, give me a question. So I gave him one. Would you rather have a million followers or 10 million followers or a million dollars? And he's like, I'd rather have a million dollars than 10 million followers. And I'm like, the followers are real. You sure? He's just like, yeah, I'd rather have a million dollars because you can invest that million dollars. I'm like, you have 10 million followers. You know how much money you can make from that time and time and time again? I saw that same um, question posed, but with a billion dollars and a billion followers. And I said, I'll take the billion dollars. You know why? Because I could just put the billion dollars in a bank and kind of live off the interest for the rest. And it's, it's game over with a billion. So I think it, it, it that, that system doesn't work with a billion. I was like, that's a really stupid question. Because I understand what they're trying to say, but I'll still take the billion every fucking day of the week. What would you take? A billion dollars or a billion followers? What would you take? I'll take a billion dollars. <laughs> right. right <'cause>, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would be like, you know what? I don't need to work anymore. More, let's call it a day but a million dollars and 10 million i'll take 10 million followers every day of the week and twice on tuesdays you know that, that, that's right and that's why i pose it not a million followers with a million dollars <laughs> because a million followers depending on the industry it could be hard to monetize but the moment you have 10 you're yeah. big enough as a brand oh sure yeah 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 absolutely so let, let's switch gears for a second to um the typical strategies that your run of the mill expert marketer uses is I'm an expert in Facebook. Like that's the big one. I'm a Facebook advertising and Facebook slash Instagram. And they know a little bit about Google sometimes and even less so about YouTube. But what about these other platforms now? Like you have TikTok and Snapchat and these other places that you can actually advertise. And this thing I keep calling, seeing like Taboo or the uh, display ads. What, what about all these other sources of traffic? Do you, do you think that um, it makes sense nowadays to start putting some of your budget towards things like TikTok, Snapchat? And are there certain things that convert well on those platforms and things that don't convert well? What, what do you think about that? Sure. So if you have an app, like a product, most of the platforms convert really well for that. E-commerce works really well in TikTok and Snapchat, Pinterest. Uh, Taboola and Outbrain work really well for lead generation courses. Um, Reddit works well for a lot of different industries as well, other than e-commerce. So when you think about these platforms, and they work for B2B and B2C, and there's different platforms out there. Google and Facebook, of course, are the best because they drive you the most volume, and they're the easiest to scale. And when I talk about Google, I also include YouTube within Google, right? Just like Instagram is owned by Facebook. But there's an issue. They're expensive. Taboo and Outbrain may not scale as well, but they're fractions of the cost. You can literally spend sometimes a fifth, a sixth, sometimes a tenth, and get great conversions. Can you ramp it up to 100 grand a month on some of these platforms? No. But who cares if you can spend two, three, five, ten thousand dollars a month and you're getting a solid ROI? Because if you do that on six, seven of these platforms, it adds up and then go tackle the big players later on. But I think they're actually a better opportunity, especially if you're starting off or if you're a small business. So what would you of those alternative like uh, taboo? What are, what are the top three or four that you think are the best ones to, that people should could should experiment with? My, I'll combine Taboola and Outbrain because they're very similar. So I'll put them as number one. Number two would be Snap. Number three would be TikTok. Number four would be Pinterest. Number five, and this is B2B, it's expensive, but it converts well, which would be LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Okay. And um, do you, in terms of, uh, do you think it's, in the, so you mentioned that like, so with TikTok and it's more about, e it's good for e-commerce. There's certain certain offerings that are better on certain platforms. You recommended like, for instance, B2B is more about LinkedIn. What would you say in terms of the others? Is it B equally good B2B, B2C or any industry specific um, recommendations? Uh, Snapchat and TikTok, B2C, Pinterest, B2C, uh, Taboola Outbrain, they work for both B2C and B2B. All, Taboola Outbrain works for pretty much any industry. What do you think it is that 
separates a great marketer from an average marketer in the world of like the whole Facebook, Instagram, what we're talking about here. I don't mean at your level. I'm talking about the average person you see right now that's sort of like, you know, there's a million and one agencies, right? You probably laugh when you hear that word, right? Uh, because they just, you know, a lot of one man shops, but you know, I respect the entrepreneurial effort. What do you think it is that separates the good ones from the bad ones? Is it, is it some of them, the ones that are more uh, into the testing side of things? Or is it about the creatives they create? What do you think it really is that makes a good, a good marketer or a good marketing agency? I think it's creativity. So not necessarily the creatives that they're creating, but the creativity, like the ideas and the concepts that they're coming up with. Because right now, everything is saturated. We all have to go omni-channel, leverage all the channels out there to do well. So your only way to win is thinking outside the box. For example, when I talk about SEO, everyone's going to be creating content doing keyword research. Does it mean you shouldn't do it? No, huge ROI. But if you want to really do well, you got to think outside the box. And here's an example of that. In my industry, if I wanted to bid on my traffic, it would cost me somewhere around one and a half to $2 million a month just on ads, just for Google. Okay. That's a lot of money that would be burning each month. I can't afford that. That's a lot of cash. It would eat away at my margins. My business wouldn't be profitable. But on the flip side, I did things away like create a free tool and just give it away. Right. And I was just like, huh, if I take what people are charging for, or give it away, I can get a lot of people. Just like those assessment tests when you're talking about sales, everyone knows about those assessment tests. If, hey, would this be a good salesperson to hire? Creating those for free on your, on your website and releasing them out there can get a lot of links. It can get a lot of traffic, a lot of rankings. And then that way, when you create the content, you're already going to have more eyeballs, more social followings, and you're going to do well. That's an example of creativity or like upsells, downsells, or creating better funnels all examples of creativity. And I think that's what it takes to do really well in marketing these days. All right, so for a lot of people, this whole COVID thing has created a really tough time of it. And unfortunately, that means falling behind on your bills, also maybe getting a bit overwhelmed financially, right? So here's what you can't afford to let happen. What you can't afford is to have bad credit as a result. A bad credit score can make it really difficult to get a loan. It'll make it much more expensive to buy a house one day or a car. Now, Credit 101 and their team of experts can fix this problem for you and repair your bad credit straight away. They're really offering you a second chance, basically. See, Credit 101 is over 20 years of combined experience. They fixed over 50,000 clients' credit some of the best results in the entire industry. 50,000 people, it's crazy, right? They're honest, they're transparent, they deliver on their promises. And here's the deal. Right now, for Wolf's Den listeners, Credit 101 has a special 60% off discount. 60% off. And to claim that, all you gotta do is visit thecredit101.com slash wolf. And instead of paying their normal fee of $2,500, you'll get their full credit repair service for $1,000 flat. And there's no hidden fees, no strings attached, just an honest, transparent solution to a problem that you literally cannot afford to let go. You just can't let it sit if you got bad credit. Listen, guys, I'm being really real with you right here. Do not let yourself sit with bad credit. It costs you in so many ways, you'll never stop paying for it. So if you got bad credit or you're even worried about your credit, Credit 101 is there to help. I want you to drop what you're doing right now and visit thecredit101.com slash wolf. Claim your 60% off offer now. Again, that's thecredit101.com slash wolf. All right, so support for The Wolf's Den is brought to you by Manscaped, one of my favorite companies. Listen, Manscaped is the premier world's famous below-the-waist grooming expert for the world. This is like it. It's like the main player in the men's grooming game. They have products available all over Europe, Canada, UK, Australia, and of course, right here in the good US of A. Now, listen, guys, you know, I know a lot of you don't like to talk about this sort of stuff here, this sort of shit, right? But me, I talk about anything. That's why I'm the wolf, right? You got to stay groomed. I'm talking about your ears. You don't want the enchanted forest coming out of your ears. You don't want like 
freaking nose hairs coming out, which is the grossest thing ever. And also the private parts down nether, down here, right? And you know what I'm talking about, guys. No one wants to see the freaking wild enchanted jungle down there, okay? You send women running for the hills like that. Trust me, I know. Not firsthand, but I've heard it, okay? Manscaped's gonna give you the tools that you need to keep that shit on the wraps, to keep it under control. Manscaped is truly absolute state of the art when it comes to keeping your ball hairs in check. All right? You know what they have? I love the names of their products. They call it the lawnmower. 3.0, by the way. It's an electric trimmer that uses a ceramic blade to make sure no accidents happen. You don't want to cut them family jewels off, right? You want to cut the balls off with the hairs. You want to keep the balls and lose the hairs, right? Bottom line, the only thing that's going to get cut on your balls are your hairs on your balls. That's it. The family jewels are safe. And of course, for those embarrassing nostril hairs, those nose hairs. I always thought, by the way, those nose hairs, you pick one out, you're like, die of a hemorrhage. It's like a blood will come out, right? Well, guess what? They have something called the weed whacker, electric trimmer. <laughs> Kills those nose hairs. I mean, what's your worst time? You're in a meeting, you're trying to sound serious, and you know people are looking at you and they're like looking, analyzing your body language, your facial expressions. But what they're really looking at is this freaking gigantic hair sticking out of your nose. They're saying, what is wrong with the person that walks around with a giant hair sticking out of their nostril? Not the fact that I haven't gotten laid in five years, you know that for sure, but what kind of person of power? Does an expert in their field really have giant hair sticking out of their nose? I don't think so, all right? It's an unsightly, gross, embarrassing thing. Again, with Manscaped's products, their weed whacker, that will never happen again. Specially designed to keep those nose hairs and the dreaded ears hair. That's like what you see, you got giant ears. And by the way, you just know that like as you get older, you know, that shit just keeps growing. Your ears and your, and your nose keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And the hair stops growing when you want it to grow and starts growing in a bun so you don't want it to grow, okay? So this stuff takes care of that. Manscaped is your company for this. Now, the best part right now, the Wolf's Den listeners, all of you, you're going to get 20% off plus free shipping on all of Manscaped's products. I'm telling you, this is the time to buy. Claim your discount right away. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com slash wolf. Again, that's 20% off. Free shipping at manscaped.com slash wolf. Your balls will thank you, as will your earlobes, your inner ear, and your nose. All right, so I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite parts of every morning, and that's when I have my Athletic Greens. Listen, Athletic Greens is my absolute favorite nutritional supplement. It gives me an extra boost for the day. If you know anything about me, now, you know that personal performance is a very high priority for me. Now, when I say performance, I'm not just talking about the body. I'm talking about the mind, too, because when you feed your gut the right fuel, then your brain is going to be at its absolute sharpest as well. That's why when I have just one scoop, one scoop of Athletic Greens, I get that feeling, that tingling sensation when you're bringing your body are really firing off together perfectly. And that's why I know I'm ready to go out and close at the highest level possible as a salesperson, as an entrepreneur, as a businessman. Make sense? So whether you're training for a marathon, you're trying to lose a few pounds, or you want to elevate your energy and your focus, Athletic Greens is for you. And if your results are anything like mine, I can virtually guarantee you'll have that extra edge in performance that sets you apart. Now, what is Athletic Greens? Well, Athletic Greens is a daily all-in-one superfood powder, and it is by far the easiest and most nutritious habit you can add to your health routine. One scoop of Athletic Greens contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. Now, in the past, if you want to get all those nutrients, you'd have to spend 10 minutes just swallowing pills, right? But with Athletic Greens, it just takes one scoop. It'll increase your energy and focus, help with your digestion, support your immune system, and fill the gaps in your diet. And here's the deal. Right now, Athletic Greens is offering a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs for the Wolf Den listeners. You'll basically never have to buy vitamin D again. So whether you're looking for peak performance in your life or better health, Athletic Greens is going to be the fastest, most effective solution to boost your personal performance. Simply visit athleticgreens.com 
dot com slash bonus to get started with this limited time offer. Again, simply visit athleticgreens.com slash bonus and get your free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs. So the average person, an entrepreneur who's got that business that's, you know, from startup to let's say $10 million a year in revenue, right? That's like so many people are in that, in that range. Do you think it's best to master marketing, like try to become your own expert in the whole Facebook game, or does it make more sense to outsource that to someone that's an agency, like one of these smaller agencies? Like, is, is it really, because like I've been, and the reason I ask you is almost my own selfish interest here, is that, you know, I've, pl- I've been back and forth with this so many times already. Should I do it myself? Should I outsource it to an agency? And I have my own internal marketing department. I have three or four people in that department right now. And I guess, you know, we always want to believe in Santa Claus to someone else that has some magic bullet that is going to be even better, right? It's all human nature. But what do you think in general? Do, do you think it's better off for the entrepreneur to try to really, you know, it's such a crucial aspect of your business that you really ought to master this and really focus in it yourself or just outsource it. So I'm a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say bias, actually, probably I'm going to give people the answer they want to hear or the answer they probably don't think I'm going to say. But I myself have tons of agencies. We have seven offices around the world at this point. I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds of employees work for me, but it's a lot where I, I've only even seen two of my offices, right? And this was before COVID, I had seven. If it wasn't for COVID, I probably would have 10 or 12 right now. And when you think about it, I would tell people when they're starting off, because we get a lot of inbound leads. We get right now around 60 to 70,000 inbound leads that we follow up with. We have over 200,000 that we don't even follow up with. So we get a lot of leads on, the, on a monthly basis. I always tell people when you're starting off, just trying to figure things out, hire cheap, hire contractors, try to do a much in-house. It's not worth hiring an agency. If you're trying to scale though, that's when I think it's worth it. If you already have something that's working, you already have an internal team, they're doing well, but you want to try to figure out how to double, triple, I think it's worth hiring an agency. But I never recommend people to go with agencies when they're trying to figure things out because the agency has too much overhead, too high expenses. You just don't get a great ROI. But when you already are at scale, in many cases, they have better relationships with the uh, platforms. They're seeing what other people are doing. They can bring you fuel to the fire and help you grow faster and increase your margins and profitability. But when you're starting off, they're just going to eat away at your costs and it's not worth it. In that agency model, there are many different um, compensation structures I've seen. You know, they want a retainer, some want a percentage of the ad spend. Um, some I've seen want a percentage of the profits, right? What do you think is the one that makes the sen- makes sense for the most people? Or, or does it really, is it depends on the situation? I look at it as profitability. If they can end up breaking down to you how much it's going to cost, and what results they're going to provide and how much money you can make. And if the numbers pencil out, do it. And sometimes you have to get creative, whether that's a percentage of ad spend or a retainer or a performance base. There is no right or wrong answer on the model. It's more so the right or wrong answer is based on the profitability and how it can scale. When it's related to ads, usually people end up just doing a percentage of spend, but you should expect that percentage of spend to go down as the campaign spends more and more money. Because right. if someone's spending a hundred grand a month and someone's spending a million, cost wise, you don't have to put in 10 times more people to manage a million a month than you do for a hundred grand a month. No doubt. Yeah. And the same goes if you're spending 80 mil. Like we have some clients that we work with, and some of these guys are spending 80, a hundred million dollars a year, literally just on like Google ads. So it's like it, it has to be efficient. Um, but the way I look at it is purely based on ROI. If you can provide a better ROI than the company can get themselves and they're happy with it, it's a win-win. If you can't, then you shouldn't be taking their money. Let's, let's, let's start from the beginning and create like a, almost a hypothetical 
company, right, on the online space and you're selling XYZ, um, let's say information product and something, right? So it's not a deliverable. What, what would be the first thing that you would do? If it was your company, you're starting a new company, you're selling some sort of information product, not a biz op, not a business opportunity, but an actual, some sort of uh, training course or some, you know, how to, okay? How would you go, what would be the first thing that you would do in terms from the marketing perspective? So I would go to YouTube. I would search for Russell Brunson webinar formula. I would also then go check out Russ Ruffino and Russ Ruffino has a webinar and I would go to Russ, Russ Ruffino. Ruffi- are you Ruffino? Yeah. F F I N O I believe. Okay. And then I would then check out Sam ovens who also has a webinar. Some of them are in biz op and I'm not saying you should do biz op, but their formula and how they create their webinar and take you from the journey all the way to educating you, getting you excited and then selling to you. I think is works for pretty much any product, whether it's e-commerce, B2B, B2C, info, doesn't matter, right? And I know in this we're specifically talking about info, but you can talk about info for training. You can talk about info for uh, coaching, whatever it may be, right? The only reason I didn't say biz op is I, I, I'm, I get a bit like negative on that space because there's so many charlatans in that space yeah. that it disturbs me. So I just want, I didn't want to like, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this. There's some very good biz ops out there, but. Not that many, you know, but no, I'm not a fan of most of them. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. The, like, they're like, no, you're not really going to teach me how to make hundred million dollars. If that was the case, you just go do it yourself and not teach anyone. Like, exactly. Just, exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. I, once you have the webinar formula down, then what I would do is you create your own webinar. You have your own offering and there's a lot of softwares that can help you do it like webinar jam. So you get that up and going and literally you just do a PowerPoint and record over it using QuickTime or any free software out there. And then from there, what I would do is I would go to Facebook's ad library. That's a library that Facebook has that shows you everyone's ads, literally everyone's ads. And you can see which ones are working well, which ones aren't. And then from there, just go to your competitors, look at their ads, create something that's similar and start throwing it up. That's how it start from day one, because you're starting off of something that works for someone else in your space. Okay, so basically develop a model, right? So in other words, you're saying, no, sell, so you believe that the best way to sell information is still through a webinar? Sadly, yes. And the reason I say sadly is because it takes more time to create a webinar than it does to throw up a landing page, but sadly it is. And yeah, I mean, I guess some of those, you know, it's interesting because I went through this process many years ago when I was first decided to get back into this industry and, and I'd been out of it for a few years and I said, okay, let's see what everyone's doing. And I heard some of these webinars and one of them was Sam Ovens. I was like, oh my God. I was like, to me, I found it offensive because of all the nonsense in there. And I, and, you know, I knew that the offer itself was, wasn't legitimate. He ended up going out of business, you know, it disappeared, but I understand what you're saying in terms of the actual formula itself of how they go out and explain something and condition the market and and is that so you're talking about in terms of just sort of this overarching philosophy of like an hour and a half because i was like wow it's an hour and a half long it's uh it just seemed to me and again because i it's hard because i'm not the average person watching i'm i'm looking at from a discerning eye of like someone looking to learn something about duplicating it so you're saying that for the person that's actually out there potentially buying a product that hour and that long form webinar is still the one that really converts the highest. We see it work extremely well. And when you look at all these people's webinars, you don't have to copy them. Just look at the format and then you can adapt it to your industry, your product that you're selling, and you don't have to sell as hard. You can sell based on stats and real data, whatever it may be that you're going after. Right. It it just works. See selling an info product to cold traffic without a webinar they don't get to know you as well. And unless you have salespeople, which is fine too, and I think that's great, but most people suck at hiring salespeople and they suck at selling. Um, hopefully with you, they learn those two things. <laughs> but if you don't know those things and you don't have the money to hire people and you, don't, you can't do sales yourself or you don't have the time and you don't want to learn it, webinar is the easiest approach because then you're building that rapport, that connection. And funny enough, if you take a lot of your sales strategies and your tactics and you include them in a webinar, probably convert even better. 
It, there were a lot of more. It's interesting when I, you know, a lot of the stuff is is baked in there, and essentially, and there's really, you know, to me, marketing that sort of, you know, that online marketing, it's really a straight line sale. It's just that it's a one sided conversation. You're anticipating objections and looping and sort of like, you know, having these, these. The reason it's so long is because you're imagining them. You know, there's all these different calls to action along the way. So it's like almost people said, you know, if you ask for the order at the at the one hour mark, and then you go another forty five minutes, well. Guess what? That's objection handling. You've asked for the order. They didn't buy. You keep talking and you try a different approach. Then you ask for the order again and again and again. So there might be four or five different closes in that long webinar. So they are very similar at the end of the day. I guess, you know, for me, though, what what do you think it is, though, that causes some people to just break out? Like online, when you, you see so just occasionally you see a new breakout winner online. Is there anything you could look at with some of these younger people in their 20s and uh, 30s that have just, you know, they come in and they do something? Is it typically, is it the quality of their product or just more their marketing tactics that make them break out? It, it's usually the quality of their product or something unique about them that you can't replicate. And what I mean by that is, this is an extreme example. You can't really replicate Kylie Jenner with her, you know, makeup line. You can't really replicate Logan and Jake Paul who, you know, they had a great formula for doing well, but they did it early enough. It was just the right time, right place. If I go copy Logan and Jake Paul and I created a replica literally right now, they wouldn't do as well just because it was wrong timing. They got in early sure. enough where it was like, cool, sexy, where everyone wanted to end up doing it. You know, sure, a good product, good service helps, but I think a lot of it is just luck and timing. So timing is a, is a critical factor here. Yes. Do you think that it pays for someone to look at it like that? Gra like those, on some level, it seems like a bit disingenuous when someone's like, being extreme and wild for the sake of being extreme and wild just because they want to somehow capture views and and you know the, the the zeitgeist of the moment but is that is that true or not true in other words is it sour grapes more on people's parts oh look at them they're not for real they're not authentic it's all or does it matter Do you, you know what i'm getting at here yeah, there's, I, I, there's I, a, like a lot of resentment towards like i know some of these young tiktok boys right and people like just hate them they hate them like they just like they just think it's not real it's not authentic it's garbage there'll be flashes in the pan i don't really buy that like I, I think that you know if you look okay it's easy for someone to get famous for a moment but those that can maintain that thing like the kardashians well, how could you say that they're not talented at this point i mean anyone that can capture the public attention for that long that's brilliance in my mind as a marketer and a business person it's not like just uh nonsense it's real so uh, but a lot of people don't think that. And, and, and what do you think? What, what is your stand on that? Yeah, I look at it as if you can maintain and you can keep going, you're doing something right. The Kardashians not only have maintained it, but they continue to monetize it in many, many different ways. <laughs> and literally almost every single one in their family. It's a formula that works for them. Uh, but there's a lot of opportunities that you're going to get out there to just, you know, have your 10 seconds of fame and just capture that audience. And you're going to get some hate. Usually when you do those things, it's not going to be, oh, you're going to get all the fame and business that goes with it. No one's going to hate on you. You have to end up deciding where if it's worth it for you or not. And usually if you can maintain it and you feel it's ethical and you can keep generating revenue on it, go for it. You can't please everyone in business. Um, but a lot of it, seriously, like when, you, when you think about like the TikTok and all that, it doesn't matter what content you create on TikTok. If you just go on TikTok right now, you'll do well just because the platform's so new that they want everyone to be popular and log in because they know it feeds their ego. The more followers you have, the more it feeds your ego, the more likely you are to keep using TikTok. Then eventually when they have to make a lot of money as a business, things will change and then less people start jumping on. Do you think there's a formula though that you could get could be taught like how to become famous or so let's say you know uh not just famous but how do you become like an influencer so to speak is it formulaic at this point or more is it is it more hit or miss you know, you know what i'm driving out here like is there a way you could actually you know someone's 21 all right i want to do this and like you know i live in 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 middle of 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 xyz nowheresville and i'm though still gonna come famous what's my first step 
I open up an account, obviously. But what do I do? Is there some sort of formula for this I that you know of? A formula. Anyone who tells you their formula, I really do, because I've seen it enough. It genuinely is hit or miss. And then on top of that, they need a lot of luck and timing. What I mean by that is you can copy the formula, but if Facebook's or Instagram's algorithm has changed where they're not going to give you the reach and likes, good luck doing what Logan and Jake Paul or some of those people who posted half naked pictures did to get all their followers. It's not going to work these days because everyone's already doing that stuff. So you got to be at the right time, right place, create the right content. And what worked, you know, for Dan Bilzerian isn't going to work for URI, right? It's old, been there, done that, not going to work anymore because, you know, Dan Bilzerian wasn't the first person or maybe if he was a first, he wasn't the last. And there's probably another thousand people who are doing the exact same thing as him. Well, I was doing that before it was even on, there was an internet. <laughs> there was no internet back then. <laughs> Thank God, by the way. Thank the Lord. I'll tell you what, well, also thank God there was no cameras on every phone because God knows what I've been, been filmed. Oh my God. Who even knows, right? It's a different world. Well, I guess my question though is, um, here's the parallel. When I first started getting into the, uh, online education world, it was 2009. And back then there was a group of people, you probably remember them, they called themselves the syndicate. Do you remember that? It was like Frank Kern and my, and uh, and um, Evan, all those guys, right? And uh, Andy Jenkins, may he rest in peace. I loved Andy Jenkins, right? And a bunch of guys, very smart guys, all of them, right? And they made their livings or they, they built their business based on constant cross promotions. It was almost like they had uh, this little launch collusion strategy. I don't mean collusion in a, in a, a bad way. So it's probably the wrong word, but they had this sort of symbiotic relationship where they would each mail to each other's things and, and, and endorse and co-endorse to create social proof. And they built their, all their businesses around this sort of mutually understood pact. They wouldn't, you know, cannibalize each other's launches and so forth. And that probably lasted for a few years, right? And then it just sort of, dissipated as other people just, you know, poured into the market. And that's even before Facebook was even, even, there was no ads back then at the point, as crazy as that sounds, it was all email marketing and stuff like that, right? Um, so, but that, that strategy of, you know, using someone else's followers to build your followers, then was that big thing it seemed like a few years ago um, in Instagram and Facebook, that was a big deal. Is that shout still out the best way to- and stuff like that, people are doing that. Is, is that still the way or they or, or is Facebook and Instagram just cut that off and they don't really allow, they don't give you the reach anymore. So it's like almost like unless you're paying to have it, I might have a million and some odd followers, but unless I'm going to pay, they won't let me hit my followers. You know what I'm saying? H how is that working these days? Yeah. So they're publicly traded companies, so they got to hit their quarterly earnings and they know that if you're going to do all those shout out for shouts and they make it easy for you to grow the profile, what's going to happen to the ad revenue? going to go down. You don't need to pay them. So what do they do? They tighten it up and say, yeah, you know, shout outs for shout outs, leveraging other influencers. It worked. We'll still make it work, but it may work only one tenth of what it worked before. And if you want that extra 90%, give us money, cough it up. Right. What's the best way if you want to build your followers, what do you think? Let's talk about Instagram first. What's the best way to build your followers? Is it through that those giveaways they're doing now, those swaps that you see where, you know, just if you follow these 99 people and win a prize, do you, what, do you, what do you think of that whole business? So I, I think it's a terrible thing to do. And here's why. The way these algorithms work is based on engagement more than anything else. So what percent of your audience, your followers engage with you? So I'm not talking about, see, when you do that giveaway, you'll get a ton of follows. And those people will even get engaged on your first few photos. But after a week or two or a month, what's going to happen? Those people are barely going to engage on your content. So then Instagram will look at it as being like, huh, got 100,000 followers. Now you went from 1,000 to 100,000. But on average, you're only getting 200 or 300 likes per photo. They're going to be like, something's wrong here. No one cares for your content. That's a signal that it sends them. So then what they do is they say, there's nothing wrong with the followers. There's something wrong with your content. So now when you create some amazing piece of content, whether it's a video, an image, a story, they're like, we're barely going to show it to people because no one cares to engage with you. So it actually hurts you in the long run. The best way to grow is to get the right type of followers. You don't need the most amount of followers. You need the most engaged followers. 
because then that causes your content to spread virally within their social network, which then creates a snowball effect and gets you to have more and more followers. So the best way on Instagram to do this is you go live and not just live, but think of this podcast. You and I are recording right now. Okay. We're live. We can see each other on camera. Why not go live on Instagram, have the same thing where we're talking to each other. Cause what happens is my followers will get to know you, your followers will get to know me, Instagram and all these social networks push that really hard. Cause they're trying to compete with live TV and take their market share. And you'll notice that your follower accounts go up and it's with the right people. They get to know you, you've warmed them up. You've built that rapport. They're going to engage in the future and they're going to convert when you sell them stuff. Makes sense. What would you, is there some sort of formula like that you would think that, okay, so if you have a million followers, how many views should a, a, a post get? If you do, a, let's say you have a million followers and you post a video, what would be a good, a short, like 30 second or 40 second video? How many people should it view it? For it to be, uh, you know, should like that, you know, before, you know, for it to be considered successful, what will be considered good engagement? So if you're just talking about a video and you're getting like the views on the video, anywhere around 5% is good. Sometimes you'll be at 3%, 4%, sometimes you'll be at 10%. So let me give you an example. I'm sorry, but I got, I posted a video. I have a million and point, 1.3 million followers, right? And I posted a video and got 500,000 views. That's right. Amazing. That's great. So that's an, that would be considered an amazing post, right? Yes. And it was a video of my girlfriend and I, and I don't post much of that. I don't post that much of that stuff. It was one cute little video of like 15 seconds long of us just laughing over some stupid thing with butterflies on my, I was having a temper tantrum because they didn't take my, the people didn't take my garbage out and I'm flipping out because like the, the garbage men didn't take my garbage out. I'm having a, a fucking meltdown and she starts filming me having a meltdown and we start laughing at it because I realized how stupid it was. 20 seconds long, it got 500,000 views, right? So that would be considered a massively successful post with a million, 1.3 million followers, right? Correct, yes. What about, then I post another thing, like a, a quick business clip, 150,000 views. That's my average by 150. So that's considered good, about 14, 15% of my base. That, that's very good. And you have a very loyal audience. Most right. people aren't going to have that. If they get 5%, they should be happy. So five is it? So what's my question is what's the number? Is it five percent and above is considered really good? Yes, anything above five percent is really good. And how about on a picture, like a regular post, like without a video, just a post? So post, if you can get three percent to like your posts, you're doing pretty decent. Okay. And do you build? I'm sorry, keep going. And you'll find that some posts, like I experience the same thing that you do. If I post something personal, because I don't really post personal stuff. <laughs> Right. It, it goes through the roof and I can get like 10, 20% of the people just liking the image. Moment yeah. I post something business related for I'm like, shit, this is better. Than, I know you're like, what the hell? This is more valuable, right? <laughs> I'm like, who cares if my baby's touching the sand, you know, for the first time? Like, <laughs> granted, me as a parent, of course I love it. But I'm like, I don't understand why you, the viewer, wants to see this. Do you look at that, though, as a lesson in terms of, okay, so how do I combine those two together to get my business message out there using my personal life? Do you, because I, I wonder, because I, I feel the same thing. I'm like, I don't believe this. Like I put this amazing, I put a training on. It was like, I have something called sales school, which I absolutely ripped off from you. Okay. And I publicly said that when I launched my something called sales school, I said, I'm ripping off Neil Patel who did marketing school. Right. Cause I thought it was a great idea. Right. So I publicly gave you credit for that and I'm doing really great with it. But it's like, I know if it was just me and my girlfriend dancing, I get 10 times. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, come on. And you not just that you spend so much more money into sales school, more time <laughs> into it to try to make it amazing for people. And it is. But then yet when you do the dancing or you with garbage cans, it's just going to do better. And that's the reality. And what I learned from that whole concept is people genuinely want to follow people on the social web to get to know them personally. To them, that's more valuable than the business aspect. And that's why you see all these influencers and the influencers aren't companies like Coca-Cola or Nike. They're the Kardashians. They're mm -hmm. you. They're the Dan Bilzerians. There's the Christian Ronaldo's or whoever sure. or Tom Cruise or whoever is the latest flavor of the one. Like I follow Will Smith a lot. People love him, right? They love him more than the corporate brands. Yeah. So you know what's interesting to that end is when you 
look at the people that are getting you know this massive traction like for example this thing uh, the latest one is kills me by the way and I'm, i love it is the guy skateboarding down on tiktok with the uh with the oceans and a guy becomes a sensation and like i i just wonder there's gotta be i'm assuming that there's people sitting around in madison avenue in a boardroom right now how do we duplicate that? Like all day long, you're just thinking, how do we do that? How do we do that? How do we, it's gotta be, right? Cause it's, right? And, well, there and, and, is, they are in boardrooms and they literally are asking <laughs> themselves, how do they do that? It's like, you ever watched, I'm sure you've watched the TV series, Mad Men, right? Yes. I've seen you had to have, right? It's, it's such a great TV series. And anyone who's not watched Mad Men, I really think you should. It's a great education for business, by the way, because it shows you the evolution of where we are today based on what advertising was like back in the 50s and even the 40s. And one of the funny scenes was they, they were trying to get this, uh, I think it was um, toilet paper or something, or no, turkeys, turkeys. And they tried to stage a fight between two women in like a mock fight between two and fighting over the last turkey in a supermarket to try to get it picked up by, you know, the newspaper and the news and the whole thing goes right. But like you see, all it's always been this sort of, you know, strategy of how do we get controversy, you know, into the news to sell more products, right? And I, I wonder, like in terms of, you know, you're a very staid guy, you know, you're, you know, you're more of the corporate type, right? You're very, you know, um, I, I mean, this in a positive way, you know, just a oh, very yeah, short I, you, image. You're right. No. I'm very, very corporate. You are. You no, know, you're, you're more state, right? A lot more than me, right? And, and um, but I wonder is, you know, is there that, um, that edge to this whole thing where it's what can we do? How do we push the envelope to connect, to be extreme enough to connect with people without pissing them off, because there's also the other side of the cancel culture aspect of things, but how do you push the envelope to, to, to stand out, but in a way that actually is good for my brand? How do you do that? It, it's tough. It's a lot of experimentation and, and tons of hits and misses. But what's easier to do is don't try to stand out with your brand. Go find the people who stand out, like the guy drinking Ocean Spray's cranberry, and just be like, you know what? let them go we're gonna put more money behind it and we're gonna even give him a free car which is what they did they gave him a truck because he, he went down that skateboard because his car broke down I'm like yeah sounds good we'll just give him a a, a free truck because how many more sales did they get for people trying to replicate that video right it was cheaper to just give a free car than it was to pay for all that publicity that they got and then the the next thing that you can do as a business is look for multiple ver variations of that sometimes you'll be able to find that sometimes you won't and the ones you do just piggyback off on and help support them. And when you can't find that, go look for influencers in your space, kind of like for the shout outs for shout outs, but try to associate with your with them. Try to just be around them. And the more you can be associated with them, the bigger you'll end up going without having to do the edgy stuff. And I'm not saying that there's not anything wrong with the edgy stuff. The problem with the edgy stuff or anything is it's hit or miss. So you spend all this time and energy you're like, crap, why am I not getting views? Why is it that when we post about the garbage men not picking up my trash, it goes viral, but every other time when I try, I'm not getting five, 10 times the views. So the easiest thing to do is associate with the people that already have it and figure out how to compensate them or work out partnerships. All right, I want to go in the next 10 minutes. I want, I want to hear the Neil Patel. I want to get very specific here. The Neil Patel strat. I want for every, I want you to lay out a strategy for everybody here on this. That's going to be listening. A lot of people, right? We have a big following here. A lot of my entrepreneurs, a lot of them are online, right? I want to know what's the step by step from between now and December 31st. What's the launch? What, what's the strategy now to maximize your Christmas sales to anything? What, what, what is it? Let's hear it. Step, just give me a, give me a, it's for me selfishly, Neil. I'm getting free consulting from you here. Okay. I want to know the next, I, I want to know the next 75 days. Okay. What would you, if you and me and everybody, what would you do to blow out, do $5 million in sales at Christmas? What's the plan? So I'm not going to give the basic, simple stuff like run promotions and stuff. because no, 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 no. What's the plan? Let's hear it. The, okay. Come on, let's so go. The first thing I would do is I would go find someone who is in similar industries and do cross promotions. Kind of like the syndicate, that still works. Not as much on social media, but it works really well with blog posts, uh, emails, going live, like those types of things works really well. The next thing that I would try to do 
and this crushes it, but no one's really doing it. Okay, so you know on your phone when you have like that Instagram, Snapchat, you do stories and people keep swiping on the stories and they're going from next story to the next story, right? It, it, it's, that's the behavior pattern. Have you noticed with ads, people try to get you to go to their landing page? And this trick is money. So what we do is we take the copy that you would have in the landing page and the message and you break it down into four or five stories. So then people are getting the marketing message within the story so they don't have to go to your page. And then when they're ready to complete the transaction, boom, then you can have them swipe up and then go from there. That I like. That's really good. The next thing I would do is I would start going live on the social networks and start selling live. So um, a lot of you guys have seen Ty Lopez. Ty Lopez has done really well recently with his acquisitions of Pier One, Dress Barn, a few of those companies that he's been buying from bankruptcy. One of the things that Ty has done really well is he'll go live and he'll sell when you're going live. Because remember, the social networks right now want their live to compete with live TV. That's why they call it live. And they're pushing really hard. So they just make it go viral and just tell random people who aren't even your followers all about it. The next thing I want you to do is you're probably already creating video content for sales or anything like that. But there's this hack that right now that'll allow you to crush it on YouTube anytime you create video content that not too many people are doing. See, YouTube marketing is the opposite of traditional SEO. Traditional SEO is you create content, you build the links, you get the shares, optimize your code. Six months, year later, you start doing decently well. YouTube is whatever does the best within the first 24 hours, if not even the first hour when a video goes live, they just push it viral. And even if you don't go viral, they push you really high in the rankings on YouTube for a lot of the keywords that are associated with your video. So what I would do is if I'm creating a video that's related to my products, my services, even if it's boring, I would send out an email blast, a push notification blast within the first 24 hours of the video going live. So you get all these people going to YouTube and viewing it. It sends signals to YouTube saying, hey, we should rank this really high on YouTube. So then you start ranking for all the sales terms or product related terms or marketing related terms or whatever they are to your business. And that drives tons of sales. The next thing I would do if I were you is there's all these blogs out there. Okay. It's hard to build an audience, but what you can do is you can guest post. So what we like doing is we'll go out to all the bloggers. Cause remember blogs want content because the more content they create, the uh, more traffic they generate. And it costs money that you have to pay people. So if you go to them, you're saying, hey, I'm going to create free blog content for you. And it's going to be high quality. They're like, yeah, sure. So then what I do is I like going to all these blogs, the big ones, Forbes, Entrepreneur, New York Times, whatever it may be. Ask them to contribute an article and create lists. Top 10 ways to improve your sales skills. Top 10 toasters. Literally, you can have articles that are list-based. And within there include your own products maybe not number one but number two or number three and when you start doing that you'll start getting a lot of people going back to your website and buying another thing that you can do and this is a really easy strategy we all have lists and what you'll find is over time your open rates go really down especially during the holiday seasons here's a simple silly hack scrub your list if you actually make your list smaller and take all the people who don't open up your emails and stop sending to them. Gmail, Outlook, they'll put your emails in the inbox instead of the promotions tab. Because what ends up happening is, is if you send emails and a larger and larger proportion don't open the emails, they assume that most people don't care for your content. And even the people that would have liked it, they'll start sending their emails in the promotions tab. So when you scrub your list, it actually says, oh, these people are all active. So whoever you send your emails to in the future, it'll ensure that your emails stay in the promotion tab. And another email hack that we love doing, and we do this before Q4 and early Q4, we'll send out a few emails just asking a simple question or two, yes or no questions, because then you get a ton of responses and replies. It starts adding people to the address book and it tells them, hey, we love content from this person because they're engaging. Then all your emails start going into the inbox. And you'll start getting way better deliverability and way better clicks. Boom. Everyone, that was some gold there from Neil Patel. Buddy, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I always look at you as being really the, 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 a true maven in the world of marketing. And I have nothing but great respect for you. Everyone, check out Neil Patel. What's the best way to follow you and, and get more stuff from you? 
neilpatel.com neilpatel.com you have a podcast as well i do marketing school mark where have i heard that before marketing school oh that's right yeah did you steal that from me from sales school <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> now, and again, I want to thank you for that because I saw what you were doing in marketing school and, and I literally ripped you off for babe. And I think I told you, you're one of your partners. I said, I, I, he, I think he was the one that said you should rip the, this off. Someone gave me the idea, one of my people. So thank you for that. It's been going, um, I just launched it. It's been amazing. I mean, it's getting huge responses already. Uh, so everyone check out marketing school. Uh, podcast, check out sales school. And by the way, if you have both, you're ready to roll. You just need entrepreneur school and you're set. <laughs> Buddy, thanks for everything. Take care. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. All right. This next section here is about business and making lots of money. Here's the deal. I'm having a small group of people over to my home in Los Angeles. And the question all of them are asking is, what's next in life? You know, these are people who've had massive success already, and they're looking to see what's that one thing, that one distinction that will take them to the next level of money and success. So we're getting close right now to that seven figures a year. Maybe you're trying to get to eight figures a year. The point is that this is an opportunity for you right now to come to my house in Beverly Hills, Los Angeles here, right, and join with nine other people all of them ultra high achievers to attend my mastermind event, which is led by me. Now it's gonna happen here is very special and it's gonna be nothing short of life changing. You and this group of top business leaders are gonna spend the weekend with me in intense regimented brainstorming sessions. Well, you're also gonna get to have some time about an hour or more with one-on-one -on -one consulting with me personally along with a special breakout session where I'm gonna be sharing the most cutting edge secrets of sales, marketing strategy, things I'm using myself right now to scale my own businesses in a massive way. But the real magic, by the way, of this mastermind is you're also gonna get it sit in the hot seat in front of all these other top performers. In other words, every person in the mastermind is gonna have that opportunity for an hour or more to sit in the hot seat where all the collective energy, brain power, and experience will be laser guided on you, focused on you and your company, and helping you take things to the next level. Things that you thought were impossible before this day will start to become very possible for you as soon as you leave. When this is over, you're gonna go home feeling energized with new ideas, new plans, and most importantly, a network of very powerful new contacts who are gonna help you make them happen fast. In other words, I'm opening up my entire role next to you as all the people who are attending to do the same. I'm telling you the results that you're gonna get here from this mastermind will be nothing short of staggering. Now, a little bit about how this actually works. First, you're gonna fly into Los Angeles and my driver, Abdul, will pick you up at the airport. We'll have your favorite drinks waiting for you at my house. We'll also have a world-class chef there to cater some of the best meals you've ever had. This is gonna be fun, and it's gonna be about learning and business and camaraderie, all the best things in life wrapped up in the one. I guarantee you will walk out of this mastermind event with a new, improved, much bolder, and more powerful vision for your future, a new plan, and massively powerful new context to take your life and your business to the next level. So what you need to do right now is go to jordanbelfort.com slash mastermind and apply. That's jordanbelfort.com slash mastermind and apply right now. Do not miss this opportunity. It's once in a lifetime and it's life changing. All right, real quick. Listen, if you're a CEO, you're a sales manager, or you're involved in hiring for your company, I want you to check out my new organization, Straight Line Hiring. What we do is we deliver expertly trained salespeople to companies like yours. World-class salespeople trained by me and delivered to you on demand. Go to my website, jordanbelfort.com. Check out Straight Line Hiring, the only way to grow your company with certainty.